Joining us now is Tom Caddick, who is Chief Investment Officer, Ned Group Investments. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're just saying it's a big week as we waited out for some Jackson Hall commentary today. Markets have recovered on the back of that uh, route we saw uh, the other week. It seems as though the direction has been higher. What does it mean in bull market intact or are you concerned from here? I mean, the the weakness we saw at the start of the the month was strange. I think it's particularly strange when even in hindsight, commentators are struggling to put some sense to it. And I think in the context of where we are at the moment, you know, if you put aside the last couple of years, we're actually in a relatively good environment for for risk assets. Um, You know, the the consumer, as we've just said about JD Sports, but the consumer is actually in relatively good form, particularly in, in North America. GDP remains fairly resilient, inflation is under control, I think we're in a good place. The problem is, and we were talking to our guest in the last hour, that it's very hard to forecast recessions. Economists admit it, we know the Fed when it comes to execution error, there's been a little bit over the years. So how confident can we really be that we are on course for a soft landing? Shouldn't we have some insurance bets there just in case? I mean, to a certain extent, you've got gold rallying, which is one of those sort of classic insurance pieces that you've got in a a portfolio. To a certain extent, yes. I think that was part of the scare that we saw at the start of the month where suddenly markets had moved you know we'd been in this position where bad news was good news good news was bad news and suddenly that seemed to reverse we had a bit of a shock that's probably on fairly thin trading as well where we saw weakness Um, but actually I think we're in relatively good in a relatively good place I mean everyone's going to be looking at Powell and what he's going to be saying Um, but all of the news would suggest we're now moving into a more accommodative phase how much do you have to move rates, though, to remain in what you deem as a good phase? Because it, it can get pretty dire very quickly from yeah. here if you continue to press the consumer too much. I mean, I think they are treading a fairly fine line. I would imagine behind closed doors, most central bankers will be, to a degree, self-congratulating. <laughs> the job that's been done... The fight is done yeah, on inflation, To right? a certain extent, exactly. But that dual remit that they have, which yeah. is inflation and jobs, that's a fairly fine line. Um, so to a certain extent, yes, I think if, we were, if they were to be too aggressive too early, that would actually probably scare markets. So one would expect, and it's pretty much priced in, a quarter point cut in September. I think probably pushing for the full 1% by... The end of year probably feels a little bullish. Um, You would expect those several cuts going into the back end. Yeah, still very bullish though on the the US economy overall is is the sentiment I'm I'm getting from you then. Um, What happens to the performance of equities then from here? I mean, the volatility is still anticipated to come through, but we still have the VIX back at that 14 mark. Uh, And if you're going to look at that, that, that could change things for you quite dramatically. But how much volatility are you seeing towards the end of the year here? So... I mean, our, our view is, to a certain degree, we're starting to see some comfort from a wider spread market strength, where we saw that sort of very thin rally from the MAG7 sort of last year and going into the start of this year. That's, that's broadened out, which is a good sign. We're looking more at sort of areas like sort of domestic US, so smaller cap and mid cap US, where you've got that, that valuation differential as well versus the large cap sector as areas that we would be focused on. But it's rotation, not necessarily That's leadership more change, about right? But yeah. not a leadership change, because you're no. still getting the mega caps really rising yeah. right now quite dramatically. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. One of the points that you don't like, illiquidity. And that was fascinating the other week, because when we saw the aggressive selling, it felt like there was nobody on, on the other side of the trade. And market architecture matters. Something we've spoken about over the years when there's been a lot of pushback around yeah. how ETFs work. Well, the reality is we've seen a, a lot of uh, ETF movement floating the boats of some stocks that shouldn't necessarily have gone up. Yeah. So we've seen more dis- discovery around price action, but in terms of the herding around the MAG7 too, another feature of the market. So what happens now? We've had a flush out, more breadth. Does that mean we have a healthier market and there's more liquidity? I think to a certain extent, yes. I mean, ETFs and the rise of that market, you could argue, has, has pushed momentum um, in both directions. So, you know, and it will get by. It's almost self-fulfilling. Um, but to a certain extent, yes, I think we are starting to see wider, broader markets. Um, with decent liquidity. Obviously, the summer period anyway is always going to be thinner, um, which probably didn't help us earlier in in the the month. I want to come back to how we think about uh, the prospects of a recession because, you know, for the last couple of years, we've been talking about these Volcker-like characteristics from central bankers and that they are willing to allow a recession to happen Mm -hmm. if necessary to ensure we don't have a reigniting of inflation or persistent inflation problem like the 70s. The reality is we get to the pointy end of it and any 
potential for a growth shock. Markets tank. Mm. The, uh, investors put pressure on the Fed. The Fed starts changing its tune as well. And we start talking about aggressive rate cuts. The reality is we haven't moved at all from the reality that we can't have a recession. You know, markets are not going to tolerate yeah. it. It's way too political and central banks are not going to allow economies to go in that fashion, even if they have to, right? I think you're absolutely right. I think most of it is rhetoric. Most of it is narrative that this is designed to try to talk markets up, talk markets down, or talk, certainly with inflation to try to manage it through the rhetoric rather than actual action. Yeah. When you take a look at perhaps some of that weakness that could be in play with recessionary fears, my question becomes why you'd like small caps, because their earnings potential isn't necessarily as great uh, compared to the mega caps or some of the other value stuff as well. Uh, and, and yet you, you still seem to like them, particularly U.S. small cap. Yeah. Part of it is down to valuation. The valuation differential is, you know, it is plain to see. Um, some of that has closed it's now. For a reason. Like, they're, they're, it, it is, I mean, down there for a reason as well. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, you know, historically, we've seen greater growth rates coming through on some of those uh, parts of the market. But also, when you've got an area that is more focused on a domestic market, uh, domestic US, where you've seen continuation of a reasonably strong consumer demand, um, GDP is still remains in, in good form, and you're going to be moving into a, in a rating cycle where you're going to start to see rates coming down. That should be a, a positive environment for the domestic market. What's interesting around this uh, recession economic story this week has been consumer discretionary to your point that the consumer is still in a, in a good place. That's been one of the leaders that was in session yesterday. It's over the course of the week. But the laggard has been energy. So, but you can't have it both ways. If you think the economy is intact, then surely there would be a trade around energy. But it's been a horrible week for the energy trade, down 6%. So what are you seeing tactically in terms of these two sectors? In terms of? Like consumer discretionary and energy. I mean, I mean, broadly speaking, we tend not to position ourselves that, that sort of way. We have been moving more towards sort of value and quality um, within our positioning yeah. rather than just sort of out and out growth. Um, partly, again, down to those valuation positions. What are you waiting for then when it comes to emerging markets? You said you say okay. uh, in your notes we are waiting to really like emerging markets again. What are you waiting for exactly? I mean, we're, we're waiting to start pounding the table and really get involved. An emerging market should be in a really good place and we've started to see some of that strength coming back particularly in areas such as latin america or south america yeah. um, particularly some of those areas which have sort of commodity rich as well um, and but you're seeing prices on commodities not all of them are necessarily moving dramatically higher right yeah. so couldn't that be a fear you also have rate cuts that have perhaps gone ahead of the fed and ahead of the Absolutely. major markets yeah. yeah so i mean you know to a certain extent i think we are moving into a good place in, in emerging markets where we can, can expect to start to see some outperformance coming back through those areas which have been in the doldrums. Does that include China? Probably I would put China to one side on that okay. one. So be careful yeah. around the yeah. EM baskets then yeah. because they still have a lot of China, don't That's they? That's it. You wouldn't yeah. just take a broad spread view on that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Tom Caddick with us, Chief Investment Officer, Ned Group Investments.